So question three then from paper two of the 2015 new hire, the reconciliation question. Really quite a straightforward reconciliation question. Don't know why there was some confusion over it. If you want to find some confusion, look at the marking scheme. It's actually best ignored if you want to find some references as to how these questions would be marked in the future, I would suggest. So what we've got here. The initial blurb about a frog and a toad falling down the well and so on, climbing up, sliding back down, climbing up, a reconciliation. But in the end, it gives the two reconciliations. You didn't have to arrive at these yourself. And for part A, it simply says, for the toad, given this reconciliation, at the end of day one, it got to 13 feet. What would it get to at the end of day two for one mark? Well, you would just say, the toad on the first day got to 13. So the toad on day two would get to three quarters of that previous day of 13 plus 13. And it is a calculated paper, so you can just press the buttons. Or you could say, I've got one and three quarters, that's seven upon four thirteens, so that's upon four, and seven times that's 91. So you've got 91 quarters feet. That would do for an answer. Or you could say 22 and three quarters. Or you could say 22.75 feet. Or you could say 22 feet and nine inches. It wouldn't matter. Any of those answers are perfectly acceptable according to the marking scheme. And so part B. Determine whether or not either of them will eventually escape from the well. That seems quite clearly to indicate you have to examine both cases and determine in each case whether they will escape. Five marks. Well, the first thing you should notice is that in both of these reconciliations, the coefficient is a proper fraction. That tells you that a limit exists for both of them. So the obvious way to approach this would be find that limit. And it should really be that you'd have to state the reason why you were doing that. And so I'm going to say, since that's a proper fraction, you could state it either way. I'll state it this way for the frog. Since a third is less than one and greater than negative one, that means a limit, called the limit of the frog, exists. Now, I would have thought that would have been a mark, maybe in conjunction with this one, but it's not. But that doesn't matter. Just to set it out the way you think you should. You don't know what the marking scheme is going to be when you sit an exam. And then find that limit. Now, there's two ways. You could either put the limit into the reconciliation, or you could use the formula. That will put it into the reconciliation here. So that means if you put that limit into this reconciliation and multiply it by a third and add 32, you'll come back out with the same limit. So it's just a case of solving that. So taking that across means you've got one take away a third. That would be two thirds of the limit equals 32. So the limit will be multiplying, I'll put it down, 32 multiply by the three and divide by the two. So the limit of the frog is going to be 16 times three is 48 feet, unfortunately. So I would conclude since 48 is less than 50, that means the frog does not escape. Frog done. Now consider the toad. Same again. There's a limit here. Since that's a proper fraction, I think I'll express it the other way, since its absolute value is less than 1, that means that the limit for the toad exists. This time I think I'll find the limit of the alternative way, which is to use the formula. So I'm going to use the formula, I'll just put this down here, b over 1 minus a, just put the pattern for it in inverted commas. So I've got this. The limit for the toad is going to be 13 over 1 minus 3 quarters. So that will be 1 quarter, so that's 4 times the 13 is 52 feet. 52 is more than 50, 50, so the toad does escape. So I'll say that. Since 52 is greater than 50, that means the toad does escape. So there are my two conclusions based on arriving at these two limits. And I haven't mentioned any marking. Maybe it was because there was five, only five marks available that they weren't quite sure how to position these. But it really does seem strange that this whole conclusion is ignored and it's only the case of the toad. Because it does say, determine whether or not. 
this one does not, and this one does. And there was no marks for this, which in future you would expect there would be. The marks were just distributed as know how to work out the limit, one for each of them, calculate the limit, one for each of them, and instead of a joint conclusion for one, it was just this conclusion for one. But no arguing with the Martin scheme. It is what it is. Now, the other way would have been to set up the recurrence relation on your calculator and go through that iterative process of actually working out the heights in all the successive days to see whether or not they escape. Obviously not the intention of the question, and obviously a misunderstanding of the nature of those equations, but nevertheless it will take you to the answer. So, taking this chappy first, the frog. On the first day, it gets to 32. Where would it be in the second day? So, we're going to use our calculators this time for this. So that would be, put 32 into your calculator, press equals, so it's now stored under answer, and then when you do answer divided by 3 plus 32, you press the button and you get a fraction. And obviously that's going to happen every time for a while, and you have to press that SD, then the next one, and then press SD, which is a bit of a pest. Best thing to do is go into the setup, shift setup, you see the two display alternatives, the maths display, maths and out, or the line format of the display, maths and out. Choose number two, the line display. Now when you do it, 32, pop it in, answer divided by 3 plus 32, it just gives it as a decimal straight away, which is what I want. But again, the standard for going through an iterative process is show the calculation on the first line of it, so a third of 32 plus the 32, and that was the 42 point, and I'm just going to put the first three decimal places, but not round them off by showing that it continues. And then thereafter, just press the button and put the rest down. So what happens to the frog then? And it seems to be going nowhere. It's slowing right down. And then at that point you would probably say, well, I can't be bothered doing this anymore. And then just start hitting that button and watching the numbers. And then eventually, of course, the calculator also gives up trying to display as a decimal. And it comes up with just 48. So you would interpret that as the limit must be 48. I'm never going to get an answer bigger than 48. No matter how many times I press this button. No matter how many days that frog tries to climb out. And then you'd make your conclusion. 48 is less than 50, which means the frog does not escape. And then you look at the marking scheme and see there's no mention of this at all in the marking scheme. Doesn't matter about the frog, apparently, sometimes. So I'll do the same for the toad, because this is what I would, I would have done this, actually. This is what could have been done in the exam. You would have considered both cases. Well, the toad starts at 13. So on the second day, it will be, show the work. I know it was done in part A. Three quarters of 13 plus 13 It's just the standard approach going to go through it iteratively and show the calculation for the first line. But thereafter you can just write them down. So as before, it's in that line mode, not the maths mode with the fractions and so on. And I'm going to store 13 in the answer and then I just operate in the answer. Answer times 3 divided by 4 plus 13. And the first answer was of course part A, 22.75. And then you just carry on. And there you are. On the 12th day, you go over 50. So, strictly speaking, doing it this way, it matters not whether there was a limit or not, because you've got more than 50, so you're off. So you finish that off then. Just rounding off a bit. Since 50.35 is greater than 50, that means the toad does escape. In fact, you go further this way and say, on the 12th day. And how were the marks allocated this time for this? Well, you look at the marking scheme and see if you can make sense of it. There's no point even attempting to explain it.